Yo, what's up? It's Teddy, Caravan Film Crews, and today we are going to get into a little bit of my editing process. Um, uh, I want to talk about uh, not only how I edit, but also um, how I took the photo. You're going to probably see some mistakes I made and um, some things I probably could have done better, but I think we both are going to learn from that. Uh, and that's that's kind of what the ed editing process is. You know, when you're out and about um, looking at the photo through that little tiny screen in the back of your camera or even if even the viewfinder, um, a lot of times you assume that you did a good job and you probably did. But uh, there are always things you could have done better. There's something you could have done differently that would have produced a different outcome. And so once you get back to the editing uh, you know, the post-production process, then you suddenly realize what mistakes you might have made and that helps you to become a better photographer in order to give you a better chance at a better edit later, which you'll still learn some ways of becoming a better photographer and that cycle just continues, right? So uh, I, I shoot with an A7R2 Sony um, with an uh, Canon 24 to 70 L series lens with a Metabones adapter. I also use the Nifty 50. It's very inexpensive and I think it does a great job. Um, also, because I shoot with off camera flash, you know, um, I don't feel like my lens is the yes, end all be all factor in, in what my photographs are going to look like. So, you know, me shooting with whatever doesn't really affect me, you know, lens wise, it doesn't, it doesn't really bother me. What bothers me is how I light my subject in relation to the environment. So speaking of that, um, you can see that this, there's a lot of detail here in the cloud, in the skies. Um, and the reason that, that there's a lot of detail in the, in the skies is because I have something else that's going to light my subject. And without this off-camera flash, this photo would be very dark. Let me show you how dark it actually is um, with the same exact setting. So you look at these settings. It says 1, 1, 1 2500th of a second and an ISO of 100, which is very, very low. Um, and, you know, mind you, even though this is natural light, I'm maintaining the details in here. I, I mean, I could do a lot. I could, I could lift this up. I could pull these highlights down. I mean, this is the great thing about uh, shooting in 14-bit RAW. But even at 100 ISO, if you look down here in my shadows, super grainy, dude, super grainy. And I'm at 100 ISO. This is as good as you could get it. You know, maybe if you got it down to 50, you know, theoretically, there'd be half as much grain there. But I still think it would be a grainy photo. It wouldn't be like a nice polished photo. Um, and if, you know, if I if I shot it properly, where I exposed it properly, you know, it'd probably be something like that in terms of exposure. Uh, you know, it still wouldn't be that great. Um, the only, the best thing to do in that scenario is to move your um, background to the side here where there would be some side lighting and that would give you an opportunity to pull and push and, and recover data without you know, without um, washing out your image from that bright sunlight that's coming in. So those are, I mean, you know, that's that's what you're doing if you're trying to battle um, skylight, the sunlight, natural light, uh, in order to get your subject in focus, I mean, in your subject properly exposed. However, if you just use off-camera flash, you can get the sky and your subject and you don't have to compromise. And, you know, there's some scenarios where I used some off-camera flash, but just a little bit, just enough. And if I, you know, I can, I can tweak this in a way where it'll look like a natural light photo. I, I, there's photographers, other shooters that have asked me if, um, or, or took a guess that photos were natural, were shot with natural light and they just, they weren't. I just didn't use as much flash to compensate for my exposure. Um, and that's what's dope about having, you know, using flash photography. I still get catch light in the eyes. Um, and I just give myself a little, little pop right into these shadowy areas, which would be 
uh, improperly exposed had I not used, um, you know, off-camera flash. Uh, and I just went purely natural. But um, when you have this very even, ex you know, evenly exposed uh, type of look, it's because you're using natural light. And natural light produces that. And I'm, you know, not saying it's bad. I shoot a ton of stuff with natural light. Um, I enjoy shooting with natural light. I use, I use natural light when it best suits me. And when it doesn't, I don't. It's just a tool. You know, you don't use a hammer for a screwdriver or a screwdriver for a nail, you know. But uh, I do really enjoy having control over my lighting. When you're shooting portraiture, uh, photography, you, your subject is the main subject. You, you know, your talent, you know, the model or what have you that's there in frame is the talent. And having a device that properly exposes the model in the way that I like is huge to me. It's major. So... For example, I know we're getting kind of deep into this stuff, but I figured might as well touch on this. You know, having the flash up here in this general direction and having it having it come down, it swings down like this when it splashes light on the subject. That's one way of lighting it. You know, and and I like that way of lighting the subject. But in something like this, where let me uh, let me pick a like a good photo, in something like this where. Um, the the flash is more off to the side here more level you know you get a different kind of look and that's man that's what's dope about having flash man like you can do a ton of different kinds of stuff with your subject i can have my subject lit from this side or i think i moved it over no i didn't move it over i kept it the same uh, but i i can really dial in where i want the light to come from how i want the light to come to i want it really soft do i want it a little harsher do i want it very bright do i want it very dim uh, there's so many options that you you get with using flash photography so that's why i use it <clears throat> so anyway i'm so i do that to retain details here in the highlights and make sure that my um, subject is properly exposed um and then from there because i don't have to go super crazy with lifting and stretching the image you know using uh pushing the highlights and the shadows to the opposite end so i could bring those shadows up or i can bring those highlights down since i don't have to play that game um my color depth is very well preserved in the image and i can i can mess with color in a way that you you know it would be very difficult um shooting natural light and what i mean by that is um whenever you uh, change, you know, the highlights or the shadows. Um, even even when you mess with contrast, um, you break up the integrity of your coloring just a little bit, you know. And so the more you do it, then the the more color, so to speak, that you lose. It's just that those pixels are being pushed to their limit already, and you know, to bring color out of them on top of pushing them is is a difficult thing to do and and still keep it you know to where it's not grainy and it's it's got nice consistent coloring all the way through if you're doing professional photography or if you intend to do professional photography i should say commercial photography sorry um how your image looks is important uh people are going to use it for advertising uh it may represent their business uh or their brand or whatever and so having images where you've done a, you've really stretched it out and broken it up and broken it down is not probably what is it's probably not what you want for somebody to put in a magazine or a billboard or whatever. Um, so that's why I use off camera flash. Um, it, it just skips a whole lot of that headache and heartache later of trying to salvage uh, an image that was pretty good. So uh all right let's just get into it so right off the top for oh first of all before we even shoot <laughs> sorry i know we're getting into it but i'm just gonna give you the whole whoop all right um i shoot very flat i use a neutral profile and my color is turned all i mean saturation is all, turned all the way down sharpness is turned all the way down and contrast is turned all the way down um and so this image it, it kind of already looks like it's an edited photo, but this is straight out of the camera. 
uh, even though I, I told the camera don't do any post processing once you snap the photo camera do not touch it I will do that in post and I like doing that because I can do that better than a camera can um, you know uh, not to knock Sony or any other camera manufacturer but um, I don't think a one-size-fits-all kind of algorithm can give you the best color the best contrast or the best sharpness and bake it into your image you know right out of the camera I don't think so that's just me I could be wrong but you know I want to make sure that I'm in complete control of doing that part of it so um, because I'm shooting on a flat image um, I I'm still preserving color depth uh, and detail um, I'm not allowing the camera to do any of that stuff for me I'm doing it so um, you know from there let's see what I want to do first of all I go to auto I know it's like cheating but um, I think this auto feature for white balance works pretty good and you know it kind of gets it to a point where I might like it so I, I and I might make a few small adjustments just a little bit depending on my taste and, and keep in mind photo editing is all about taste man uh it's not there's no like cookie cutter way of doing it you just work with it until you get something that you like uh you do what looks good to you uh we could have the same photo and i could pass it down the line from one photographer to 1000 photographers and with all these settings here to play with in lightroom you know we'd all get a different looking image from the same photo depending on what we liked so um mind you also i maybe use um a very small amount of lightroom maybe not very small i should say uh I'll probably use like maybe 15 20 percent. i guess that's pretty small but i don't run the full gamut of what you can do with this uh, program this software is amazing there are a ton of really awesome features i watched so many tutorials about this stuff and i cannot remember all of it so i've i'm only you know incrementally adding things that i think would be really cool to add depending on the kind of photo that i got uh but always learn about your software that you're using all the time always learn about your cameras your lenses um your flashes your your diffusers uh all that stuff always learn more and more and more and more about those things because these manufacturers have built in a lot of really awesome features that are just not obvious to the average photographer so after i get my white balance going and and mind you you know white balance it can really help you determine the mood of a photo you know um and and depending like this is really the foundational step you really want to get this right in camera but i do not use auto white balance i i don't like it and i'd rather have um a you know the same white balance the whole time um and that kind of gives me a gauge to as to what kind of lighting was out there so um i can i can know what kind of colors i'm truly working with when i'm in post and i don't remember what kind of ambient lights were around all right so anyway i know it was like a super long we didn't even do any editing on this photo at all but um i felt like the, you know those were some I felt like I should share that information, but leave a comment below. Tear me up. Tear me to shreds. I can handle it. If you don't like to hear that stuff, then we won't do it anymore. So anyway, um, I'll freaking auto this right here. Bang. And it gives me what it thinks is the best, you know, are the best settings for this. And these settings suck. But what it's doing is retaining the, um, you know, detail in the highlights and details in the shadows. So you got to think like um, for the software you know when you when you hit auto that's what it does it tries to to bring those details out from the full you know from all ends of this uh you know the spectrum of light in the camera uh or in the image i should say and that's what this histogram is measuring you know um the the light basically that's in the photos the colors that are in the photos white red green blue etc um and I hate this this sucks the other thing i forgot to do on portrait mode uh, or portrait or oriented shots because i shoot 16 9 they're very skinny and that's a nightmare for instagram um, but what i do is i just hit reset and um 
you know, I bring it back. Uh, I put, I give, I get that width back. And that's what's cool about shooting 16.9. I think um, for, you know, these landscape oriented shots, it's very cinematic. Maybe because I'm a, I'm a filmmaker too. I really like this cinematic look. But um, for portraits, you know, it's really easy to get more leeway in your framing. Instead of having to crop in, I can crop out and get more of my scenery, which I think is cool. So I do auto, I, I want it a little tiny bit warmer for my base. Um, uh, white balance, I'm gonna hit auto here. It's gonna give me something really ugly, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep what I want and, or, or bring out what I want and um, get rid of what I don't want. And so I want a little bit more contrast right there. Um, maybe I'll, I'll use the contrast tab instead of the shadows and highlights to give me some contrast. And the reason for that is because what contrast is going to do is it's going to lift your highlights and crush your shadows um, at the same time. And, you know, if, if I... If I bring these highlights down and I push these shadows up, I can increase my contrast and that might help me to make my image look a little bit more natural. I mean, definitely not here, but in some photos that works. But yeah, so uh, I'm going to kind of put my uh, shadows a little bit higher so I can get some of that detail in the dark areas so the dark areas are not so dark and the lift my general exposure up just a little bit and bring the highlight down, bring the sun and the clouds in the sky, those details, bring those back down. Um, I'm going to bring these whites up and that is going to make the brighter parts of your image um, brighter. That's all. And the blacks are going to go to some of the darkest parts of your image and make them darker. Be very careful with this tab because um, depending on what screen you're looking at, you know, if somebody's watching, I mean, looking at your photo from their computer to their laptop, to their tablet, um, to their phone, which whether it's a Samsung or an LG or an iPhone or whatever, uh, this black, these blacks right here are going to look different to everybody. Um, so be very careful with this tab right here. Uh, clarity, it just adds uh, a general sharpness to all the lines so um you know if you're shooting like a bodybuilder or something like that you might want to increase that clarity up um because the lines in their muscles and their skin and everything will start to come out um you can also go negative on the clarity and it kind of smoothens things out you know maybe if you don't want to do a whole lot of retouching but you need to smooth out the face and skin you might want to go that route on it um dehaze is going to add um uh, you know, if, if let's say you had a washed out image, like what we had before, I think an image like this, you know, I would dehaze it and that would basically remove that wash out glare that's hitting the lens, which is cool. Um, but I really rarely use it because a lot of my photos already have some pretty high contrast to it. Um, I'm going to bring the shadows out a little bit, maybe lower my contrast just a tad bit. Um, all right, moving on. I saved this tone curve for last because there's so much you can do with this tone curve. And I feel like it can really add some style to your stuff. So, yeah. Um, I love this HSL thing. It helps me control all the colors in the scene. Um, I just love it, man. I really do. Uh, red. You got to be careful. Okay, so look, here's the thing, right? Is that all skin are different. I don't care who you are. I, I've edited, uh, I, you know, I'm probably doing, you know, anywhere from 4,000 to 9,000 photos per month. And a lot of them have people in it. And skin is all different. Some people really react to this red tab. Like, as you can see, you can see some of his skin reacting to it but some other people's skin does not um but so you want to be careful okay like you might be looking at this red in his shirt and that's what you focus on when you're adjusting this red tab but keep in mind that his forehead lips you know all this other stuff might also go along with it um so just keep that in mind orange um 
that's usually where most skin is located is in that orange tab um and i'll try to add some luminance which is kind of brightening it a little bit um and i'll try to add some saturation and, and i'll always come back to um skin as i as i go uh depending on what's going on um another thing to do man sometimes i just push and pull it just to see what this is really controlling and you know we got right off the bat just right here on the yellow tab we have two completely different looks you know and you can go either way depending on the kind of look you're going for i think i'm going to go with the more you know golden sunish kind of thing um i'll probably desaturate it and really push it out um and do it like that green obviously that's for those clovers there um and you know if i put if i make this very green it's going to take your eyes off of this this blue suit and it's going to go to the green stuff so i might like that hue of green like a really deep rich rich green but i will darken it by desaturating it and you know and if i need to further darken it I'll, add, I'll throw that luminance in there and that kind of it's still there it adds you know a little bit of pop to this tan brownish area down here by the rocks um but i don't think it takes away from this blue suit at least not too much and that's what i'm willing to to give up there um this aqua usually is um good for the you know fringe parts of the sky um that's not what the one you got to worry about the one you got to worry about is this blue because this really can usually like if, if there was a blue sky in the background this would really affect the blue sky like really really well um you know that those colors would be very responsive to it very much like this blue suit is so that, that's what's cool about this um you know this tab is i can go green blue to purple um they are um you know depends on what kind of look you're going for i know somebody who saw this was like oh yeah do the purple dude and other people were like nah do this turquoise teal color um i don't know man um i don't want to stray too much from his blue just because it was it was a nice suit and i like the color of the the suit i thought john john Yale did a great job um i might give it some more saturation and then lift it with the luminance tab just so it pops i just want it to pop from uh the scene here the next thing is this magenta tab i mean it's purple tab this purple tab also affects blue very um in a finer way and that's kind of what this aqua tab does for green and this other blue color it'll just affect it in a certain kind of way um but I might want to go with, I think I want to go with like a lighter blue color, just because you know this is a little, a little tiny bit of a brighter scene, and I don't know, I think it might be, might be fine. Um, then magenta, most of the time, nothing is magenta, but sometimes, like a pink dress or something like that will, will be magenta for sure. Um, all right, now we go to split toning. So split toning. Uh, what we did here is we we dialed in, you know, it's not really grading per se, but we're dialing in the color, you know, we're kind of correcting the color of the scene. Um, you know, now that I look at this yellow, I don't know if I really like it. Maybe I want it to be a little bit more golden. I don't know. Uh, I won't make it so orange. I'll, I'll keep some yellow there. All right. So uh, with split toning, you know, this is where you have your orange and teal, your your green and olive, I mean, your olive and, and red, um, you know, those those opposite color wheel type of complementary colors. It's up to you, man. I don't know what you want to do, but um, I'm going to play around with it. This Sometimes I know exactly the look I'm going for, but other times I'm just experimental. And just so you know, I really don't like this yellowish, I mean, this orangish kind of... Um, look here but it's okay if i really have a problem with it later i'll fix it i don't have to fix it right now um and you know i could i guess i could fix it with this highlight tab 
um, but I really don't want to. And I don't want to do too much in the highlights there. In the shadows, um, I think I want to go with, you know, that looks like a sci-fi type jump off. And now we're getting into, um, you know, true detective, you know, um, Nash Bridges and all that kind of stuff. Or that kind of look anyway. Um and yeah i mean i really don't like any of these colors but i think something like that is something and I, I might swing it over and balance it over to the highlights just to blend that look a little bit better and so so remember the thing to keep in mind is that um your image, your, you know, photo editing is made up of a lot of micro adjustments, okay? There is not one tab that is going to make your look awesome. And if you, do, if you do everything right, or if you do it right as you go, the next thing that you do should give you more options to play with what you've already done. I hope I'm making sense, but... That's how you want to look at it, okay? So if you're if you're getting to this point and you don't like how your image is looking, um, don't worry, it's not over. If you really, really hate it, then yeah, start back at the top. Do it over again. Do something different, you know? Um, all right, so sharpening. I don't know, man. Sometimes I just max out sharpening. I know you're probably not supposed to do that, but I kind of do that. Um, and it's really because this is a... 42 megapixel uh, photo. There's a ton of detail already in it. Um, sometimes you can add sharpening, and if your focus is off by just a little tiny bit, it'll bring it back and it'll look like it's in focus until you like zoom in, you know, one to one ratio type of thing, where it's definitely not. I mean, here it is in focus though. Um, and that's what's dope, man, about 42 megapixels. Look, man, I could do this. I could do that. What? Here, if I zoom out, like, that's, that's what your guys' photos look like <laughs> on your camera right here, you know? And, uh, if I zoom all the way out, you know, then, let me, oh, come on, man. You're gonna, you're gonna play nice? You know, then I have all of this. That's what's awesome about having that many megapixels. Um, does it suck on space? Yes, but it, it's really good to me. Um, removing chromatic aberration and your profile corrections. Look, um, every lens, especially on full frame cameras, definitely on uh, APS-C, not so much on micro four thirds, but on full frame cameras, distortion is a real thing. And distortion is a ridiculous pet peeve of mine i hate distortion i cannot stand distortion but it is on every single lens so let's say this you know canon lens that i'm using uh where are we at 24 to 70 um you know if if, if i turn this off you can see that it got rid of some of the um vignetting from the lens you know when you shoot it wide open uh there's some vignetting there the vignetting is like the basically the very edges of the rear uh element of your lens that just kind of nick the edges of your sensor just a little tiny bit like they're just almost there and they create what's called a vignette and if you shoot with an APS-C um, lens on a full frame camera, you can really see very deep, dark vignettes on your corners, um, which some people like, man. I shot a wedding, one of my, one of my maybe it was like my fourth wedding ever. I shot it, um, and there was a portion of it that had a Canon 5D Mark II on a 35 millimeter APS-C lens. It was video, and it actually turned out pretty good. We used it and the bride loved it. So I know that doesn't mean much, but still. But um, so if I turn this off, if I use this uh, lens correction and keep in mind, you can probably, it's very likely you're gonna find your little lens here. Uh, lenses that I don't see are like, um, 
Oh, no, Venus is in here. Venus Leoa. I don't think they got... Yeah, they do got Venus Leoa 15mm f2, 2.8. These 0D lens are, lenses are the best. They are the best uh, because they don't have any distortion. But not only did it get rid of this vignette, um, it also adjusted the distortion uh, of the image. So when I click this on and off, the, it's a very slight... Very, very slight, but there is some distortion there. Um, and that's distortion I'm willing to live with because I'm shooting on a 24 to 70, which is not bad. You know, the distortion isn't, isn't crazy. And the higher your, um, the, high, the, the, the higher the millimeter on your lens, you know, the, the deeper your lens goes, the less distortion generally that you're going to see. Unless you're using like a really weird or super crazy telephoto zoom lens then you're probably still going to see some distortion all right anyway moving on man um this camera i mean this uh photo always looked a little bit off to me it looks like it's tilted to this side just a little bit so i'm going to see if i can level it out which um you know it does, it does all right i don't want to go too crazy with leveling it um because then my subject will look like he's not level and that's i don't want that i'd rather have my subject look level and the environment not. You can add post crop vignetting here if you want. This is so this is like what a super uh, uh, an APS-C lens looks like on a full frame, and you can see like that's what vignetting is 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 that kind of stuff. Uh, you can also add some grain in if you want to feel like you know you're shooting uh, shooting film, and uh, yeah, I don't want to ever do that. Um, I'm good. I, I don't need to shoot film. Some people like it. If you like it, I'm not knocking you, bro. It's just not for me. So um, then we come down here to the calibration. So what this calibration menu is, is basically um, allowing you to change, you know, the redness of the reds, the greenness of the greens, the blueness of the blues. And by adjusting any one of these tabs you affect the other colors in your scene you know and they respond to you know what what you consider blue right and that's why they call it the calibration menu this is what you what do you consider red and based on that it lets the you know the profile adjusts all the other colors which really can dial in you know some awesome looks using that but uh, it's it's also dangerous territory because you can absolutely ruin your image messing with this stuff down here so make sure that before you hit export it's something you really like but we're going to do that right now we're going to mess with it um so if i want a, a, you know more colder cooler tones then i'll go into this green area it gives me a cooler look um be very sparingly with this magenta um tint into your shadows you know it's not always the best thing to do um, I, I think I want to lower this exposure just a little bit. <laughs> Felt like it was too bright. I'm not a big fan of, you know, very evenly lit kind of things. I, you know, I want some depth and contrast. Um, all right. So with the red, you know, watch the skin tone. You can somewhat correct this stuff a little bit later, but you just want to be careful, man. The more you can get right in the beginning of whatever you do, you know, the better off you're going to be. Um, and I already know what the blue is going to do. So I'm just looking at the rest of the colors um, in relation to the skin tone of his face. Um, you know, I think that's cool. And then this really gives you that hipsterish, you know, orange and tealish kind of kind of vibe here. Um, so you look at the before. Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. Come on, come back. If you look at the uh, before and after, you know, it's a, it's a little bit of, of an adjustment, but I think it kind of blended uh, the overall look of the image together. I'm going to go back to these greens because I want to give it a little tiny bit more life um, into there. Oh, I'm going to need to push this. And I'm going to darken this out just to give it a little bit it's it was too yellow i didn't like that um all right now i'm going back to the tone curve and in shoot man 
I could be doing all of this wrong. I'm sure there's a real professional in the comments who's going to share his or her two cents, which is cool. I welcome it. Maybe we could talk about it. But um, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to add some blue into the shadows just because. All right. So look, this is a this is a curve. I set up this custom three point little axis right here because it makes it easier for me to designate which area of the photo I'm affecting. Um, and I always ended up making these three points anyway. So I just made a little preset right here, which you could save your own preset if you'd like to. Um, now, this bottom part is going to affect the lower end of the spectrum of light. And this higher part is going to affect the higher part of the spectrum of light. You know, so as you move through this, it's going from darkest to brightest. Okay. So somewhere in the middle here is skin. You know, somewhere over here at the top, you know, are these parts, this part of the sky. At the very top is probably this part of the sky. And that's how you look at the, you know, adjust making these adjustments. Um, so I want to add a little bit of blue into that bottom end. And I feel like um, I may need to um, balance out the, the image. I'm using a gaming mouse because on this gaming mouse, I can adjust the sensitivity of how my mouse moves, right? So I click the button and my mouse moves really, you know, um, short. If I click a button, it moves a little bit wider. I'm, I'm moving the same distance on um, on the mouse, but um, by adjusting the the mode, it gets you know I'm, I'm affecting a wider area of view, right? So or or my sensitivity to my mouse is is you know higher. But when I put it on red, which is the lowest setting, it get, helps me to micro adjust, you know, and and the movements of my um, uh, wrist are not as exaggerated. Um, if I, you know, remember the, the colors in kindergarten, if I mix red with blue, I get purple. So keep that in mind. But also if I, um, take green away, I get purple because only red and blue is left. Right. And, and so remember that as you're moving through, um, I might add a little bit of green in the bottom too, just to kind of give it a little bit of character, but not too much. That was way too much. Just a little tiny bit of character. Um, my mid tones, like skin tone, it's a little too red. So I'm going to pull that back. I also don't like how um, these stones are a little too red. So let me pull that back. And um, I think we have an image that doesn't look like it's crazy processed. So let's go to the, this is the before. That's what it looked like before. That's what it looked like after. Before, after, before, after. Um, and I think it looks better. I think it looks like how you probably think this should look like if you were actually there looking at him taking this photo. Um, and this just looks like a regular, you know, shot. So that's it. You know, it's my process. Here I know, especially if you, if you're a beginner, you know this stuff is um, a little bit difficult to understand sometimes. So I am just going to edit another photo, um, maybe of the same set. Uh, I'm good. Actually, I'll move on to something else. I would I would still run through. I would apply the same look for the most part with uh, with micro adjustments as I go to some of the other shots that I thought looked good. Um, look, man, you know, a happy model is going to do a great job every single time. I don't like, you know, making models I work with uncomfortable. I like them to be very comfortable um, working. Uh, I like them to have, uh, like if it's cold, I, I don't want them to be cold. I want them to be warm. If we're in cold weather, you know, I'm going to try to help them pick out an outfit that is, um, you know, warm for them so that they don't have to worry about warming up. They can just worry about facial expression and where to put their hands, you know, um, and being creative and stuff like that. 
So just keep that in mind if you're working. You know, it's up to you. You guys, you guys want to make your models uncomfortable? By all means, go ahead. You know, that's your thing. If your models want to work with you like that. If that makes you feel better about the photos you take, you know, go ahead. Um, I don't know. I'll probably edit this photo. I kind of like his expression. It's not normal. It's unusual. So auto everything, right? Because I'm because I'm a noob. So we're gonna auto that. We are, you know, those highlights probably could have stayed there. Um, man, you see how much, like, recovered just from an auto adjustment, dude. And I still have details of clouds in the sky. Um, this was just, this was like 20 minutes after the last set at Coit Tower. This is at the Palace of Fine Arts. Um, and you know what? I'll do one where he changed his outfit. Uh, you know what, we'll do, uh, yeah, something like this. Nope, not that one. Maybe that one. Let's see, sorry, it's loading. I, just, I think it's because I'm doing screen recording at the same time. How about something like this? Yeah, this is definitely way different than the last shot so I'm gonna go to auto white balance it's gonna make everything blue because everything was orange but I like the orange don't want it to go too blue um, and I think I want to throw some I, I want to make those lights really red and rich red so you can see how white balance is already affecting the grade um, and laying a foundation for the rest of the photo and just remember that okay all this stuff is important don't don't skip over things like white balance and whatnot. Um, and I'm watching this on two screens. I have my screen recording uh, software running on um, the screen I normally edit on. Um, so the screen I'm actually editing on right now is a little bit closer to the image rating or the color rating on most cameras i mean most phones most tvs and whatnot um but i get a lot of really good dynamic range on the photo uh on the screen that i normally edit on and you want to understand that okay you, you know you might want to invest in a really nice monitor i bought this uh the monitor i really edit on, edit on is a samsung um I forgot how many inches it is, but it's the it's the super wide, the ultra wide monitor. I bought it with Bitcoin last year when Bitcoin was real high. Shout out to Bitcoin. <coughs> Off Craigslist. This guy took Bitcoin for it. Um, but yeah, so keep that in mind, right? So I know that th on this screen I'm editing on, my the darker parts of the image are going to look darker, right? And on the other screen the darker parts of the image are not going to look as dark keep that in mind okay that's important to know um i think my shadows are too lifted um that's cool maybe we'll lower contrast a little bit uh, i don't need as much contrast at night because my screw my scene is generally darker we're not quite at night but it's definitely not bright out here And I'll use whites to lift the brighter parts of the image. And man, this thing right here is dangerous, so be careful how you use it. Um, and I'm going to add some clarity. And that's it, man. I, mean, I don't know. I, I like the color, so I'll leave this vibrance. Um, good job, Adobe. All right, so for red, it's definitely going to be those lights over there, right? And man, I could do a lot. I can I can make it really super red, but look at his lips. He got hella red, so I don't want to do that. Um, I'm going to go right here. On the orange side, these are also going to affect the lights, but I'm affecting skin tone. And, and you got to remember that. And I could do some masking and stuff like that if I wanted to. I don't feel like doing that. Um, I think this is going to be a great image without that anyway. Um, now, the yellow side... <coughs> of things. I think I want to desaturate it a little bit and get this wall. You know, we're going to add a little bit of detail into it. Um, but I want this wall to be a different tone than the skin or, or as different 
you know, as different as I can make it. Uh, I highly doubt there's any green in this image. There is not. And I highly doubt any aqua. There is not. There is definitely some blue here. I can make that sky purple, which is just not real. Uh, but maybe if I made it like a like a sunset purple, no, can't do it. Um, you could make it blue like that, and I kind of do like that look. Um, but yeah, this is cool right here. Um, and I do like so I love these colors. This red, teal, red, purplish type pattern here. And I want to maintain that, so I'm going to keep that how it is. I might desaturate it. Oh, I might saturate it. No, I'll desaturate it. Um, I don't think there's any of this in there. Yeah, there's a little bit. I'm going to push it into the red side. So that red blends in. Nice, nice and feathered blending over here. Um, all this stuff matters, man. These leading lines going to our subject. Um, you know, this is kind of like, uh, you know, I don't think it's taken away from the image, but, um, I don't think they're pointing towards him either, but the rest of it is the pathway, all this stuff. So just remember, man, all that stuff really does matter. Um, all right. So for highlights, uh, I'm thinking I'm, I'm going to go with the yellow, maybe throw some blue in the, in the shadows or maybe not. We'll, we'll see. I'll play around with it see what see what i get um i do like the idea of balancing out some of the red here in the image just a little bit it might be just too red um also you know it can help to accentuate the red that's already there too um, by balancing out some of the almost red parts sharpening eh, to me doesn't matter i got 40 megapixels um, I'm not going to adjust, um, the lens calibration. I think it's fine. Um, all right, because we have lines like this, I do want to make sure that vertically stuff is pretty straight. It warped my image pretty hard, really hard. Um, so let me see if I can make it level and that straightened it out a little bit. I think that did a good enough job yeah boom that did a good enough job okay um no vignetting no grain i don't want any of that stuff and i think i'm gonna go with a little bit of purple in the shadows um and here is where we can really adjust the the red on this grade and how this red stuff looks um i think that's good um don't want it I don't want it to be too red let me see if I can pull this skin tone back yep there we go yep yep perfect okay and voila not really though um, let me go and, and make these adjustments here um, I think I want to go with the green, and if I am correct, I can push some green. Nope, I don't want to push any green there. Let me see if I can bring that suit some detail, which might be good. Oh. Um, I might add some red into the shadows, though. Just a little tiny bit. Let me adjust my mouse sensitivity that's really for like snipers when you're playing the games and stuff you know you know you know what i'm talking about i play last of us though the last of us is the best game ever made hands down bar none don't even try to argue with me in the comments i'll block you um you know this this part of the image right here is like it's bothering me it's irritating me and I'm trying to think about what i could do to get rid of that other than make it even a an even worse color don't want to do that so what i think i'm going to do is i'm going to go to um my white balance i'm going to push it a little bit more blue but see how i'm i'm affecting the entire image now 
you know, which is, which is, it, it could be good or bad. Um, I'm going to try to bring that skin tone back, you know, that depth of the skin tone back. Um, there's too much blue in the shadows with his suit. Let me get rid of that. Actually, ooh, ooh. This is very, uh, no, that's all right. I don't want to do that. Let me, let me make a micro adjustment here. Let's see if, yep, there we go. A little green, a little red, but let me, there we go. That's what it is. And... That subtle red just kind of gives the overall picture a reddish tone. Um, this is a rather difficult photo to do, which is great because now we get to get to hang out and talk about it. See where I messed up at? I think where I messed up at is I should have feathered the flash, not or flagged it off to where I didn't get this pillar lit as well as my subject and there's a number of ways you could, you could do it you could use a strip box instead of a beauty dish like i use um or i can just angle the flash instead of pointing this way i could push it off a little further here and um and angle it to where the edge of the soft box is what's lighting my subject instead of lighting the pillar and the middle of my subject is, I mean, the middle of the soft box is lighting my subject. And then this is dead air that doesn't get lit. Um, and that's one thing I could have done different to help me with my color grade. I could also mask this, but I think it's fine. I think it's all right. Maybe I'll make it a little bit darker of an image to give them a bit more focus on the subject. Um... This is very Star Warsy. It looks, I don't know, to me, to me, it looks Star Warsy. Could be wrong though. Um, but yeah, we're gonna keep that one. And that is gonna conclude today's session. This is probably a very long video. Probably didn't have to be that long, um, but it turned out to be very long. But thank you, I appreciate it. Uh, if you stayed to the end, sorry if I completely wasted your time and uh, this absolutely sucked. Like I said, hold no punches in the comments. I'm ready for you, YouTube. Do, do, do what you're going to do. I know you're going to do whatever it is that you're going to do. But, yeah. Um, follow me on Instagram. Caravan Film Crews. Um, go to my website if you want to. You can if you want to. Um, check out some of my stuff. Uh, obviously, you're on YouTube. Uh, follow us on Facebook. Like us on Facebook. I mean, Caravan Film Crews. And uh, until next time, peace.